Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to show you how to create a basic diagram and some of the basic concepts that you come across in Visio. So first of all, I'm on the home screen and there's a basic diagram. I'm just going to double click on that to open it up and then it will create a template for me. What you have once the template opens is a series of stencils down the left hand side. These are called stencils. So you've got quick shapes, basic shapes, arrow shapes, decorative shapes and graph and math shapes. So these come with the basic diagram template. You've also got an option there for more shapes. And then you've got all the other templates that are available. And you can see that there's quite an array of different stencils. From all these other diagrams that you can bring into this one if you so wish now once you get into Visio a bit more these could become quite useful you can also search in this box for a shape so I'm going to search for a car and then it will look for all those other stencils for any any cars that you can find you can see it's come up with cars there and if I close that off it comes back to this stencil I'll go back to basic shapes so this is where your stencils sit. Now some of the templates you get in Visio don't have as many stencils as this. They might only have three or two. It depends, but you can add as many as you want. And if I go to uh, more shapes and down the bottom there, you've got the option to either open a previously saved stencil. So these are mine that I've saved or create a new one, new stencil, and then you have a little stencil there with nothing in it at the moment. But it's a case of you click on, say you want that shape. I can just drag that, hover over stencil three, which I've not saved yet, and then drop it into there. And it will put that in there. So you can just drag and drop, hover, drop them in. And then um, it will put it in there. I didn't drop that one in. Pie slice, drop it in. There you go. And then you've got a little save icon where you can then save this as I'll put testing. I don't think I've got one called testing. OK, so I've called that testing. Now, where that comes into its own is when you're doing some more complex diagrams. Maybe you can create your own stencil with drawing shapes that you've created and you can just basically create them on the on the um, canvas here and then drag them into your stencil and save them for later use. That's what some of the other stencils that I've got there. If I open one of mine, if I open, open, um, what have I got here? It's, what's that one? WBS. So I don't know what's in this one. Not a lot. If I drag that on there. So that's the shape that I've created. If I don't want this stencil, I can just basically right click on it and close it down. So that wasn't a very um, a good example, but some of those stencils got quite a lot of shapes in there. Now, if I go back to the basic shapes and pull them onto this screen so you can see how this works, if I bring a rectangle, so a rectangle is a rectangle. It does never become a square. Likewise, a square is a square and it never becomes a rectangle, no matter how you move, how you move or resize it. Now, at the moment, you can see as I'm moving these shapes around, there's lines snapping into position, telling you when you're lined up, centered, top, bottom. So it's quite good and useful to see those lines in Visio. You can also, if you go to the view tab, you can actually tick the grid on, which gives you like a, a piece of graph paper that you can use to line things up as well. Now, one of the big issues with Visio, a lot of people find difficult to get the head round, is how you connect shapes together. So on the home tab in the middle, you've got tools. You've got a pointer tool, which is on by default, which means you can just pick things up and move it around, as you can see I'm doing now. You've got the connector tool, a text block, some drawing shapes, which are not these so these wouldn't have for example these connection points on they would just be if i just draw a rectangle you'll see it so there's no connection points on this watch this if i click on the connector there's a connection point 
there's a connection point there are no connection points on that shape so if you just want a rectangle you may as well go for it from there rather than drawing it but there are other uses that these have so once you click the connector tool obviously when you hover over a shape if there are connection points it will allow you to connect from one to the other now there are two main connection types shape to shape and point to point if I sit on that point and move and drag to this point glue to connection point is what I'm after not that where it says glue to shape that's a different one glue to connection point I'll just let go on that one now that's on even though I finished doing what I wanted to do so good practice is to click on the pointer tool to make sure you're not doing connection lines everywhere but point to point is what I just did there which means if I move this shape around it's always going to be that point connected to that point even if I push it this way like that so it's point to point now if I just delete this one for a second and then do another connection but this time do shape to shape so I'll click on connector the whole shape is has gone green the outline green I'm clicking I'm dragging and it says glue to shape yep what's the difference point to tool on when I move that round it's going to snap to the closest point shape to shape it's not dependent on a single connection point as the other one was so point to point shape to shape those are the two main connection points now if I click on this little cross which is connection point what you can do is sit on one of these connection points and then right click and you get this option here inward outward and inward and outward so basically you can change how shapes react by changing whether it's an inward connection or an outward one or both so if you think of it as a magnet two positives would re would repel each other and a positive and negative would attract so the, those are the type of things you have to think of now this shape doesn't have any connection points with this clicked and the control key down I will be able to click a connection point on the edge of this and then if I just click on the pointer tool just to make sure that's on there so it's still on there connector see it there now and then I can connect it to that shape so I've added a connector if I go back to the pointer tool you, it should stick to it it does there's no point doing that if that's all you want to do because these rectangles already have those on there where this cross comes in connection point is where maybe you want multiple um, lines going into a shape for example if I do a control key connection point there and then try connecting to it to that one you can see how that's now connected I've got to position this line slightly but it's connected twice into this box so that's in that's out the arrows going the other way so that's what this is about you can just create multiple additional connection points on either shape and then you can connect to them like so and they will glue in position so that's what that little X is for now text if I just get rid of these for a minute every shape in this stencil has a text box on it so I'll just make this one a bit bigger and type some text my name my name is Steve sitting in the middle of that box now if I click on it I've got some tools here where I can go top left so let's put it in the top left what this tools for is creating a text box in addition to the ones that sit on here so if I click on that I can draw a text box and type my name in there pointed tool again now that hasn't got any borders so then you get people doing a line I'll have a line color red you know and then they go for a fill I'll go for a fill green and then this is just counterproductive because click on it first green I could have just brought a rectangle on and all that would have been there like it is in this one I can make that one green 
whatever colour I want it to be. The font's now gone a bit pear shaped, so I need to change the font colour to black so you can see it. So if you're going to just put text in a box, you don't need to use this text tool because it's on a shape already, all of these shapes. Now what this little tool is for is moving the text block, which is basically this bit of text here, off the shape slightly. So if I click on that and then sit my mouse, so the mouse is changed to a big cross and I can then just drag that. You see the text box that's attached to this shape like that, for example, click on the pointer. Now when I move the shape, that bit of text comes with it, but it's outside of the actual box. So it's just a useful tool if that's what you're trying to do. That is the text block tool. So all of these tools are sitting there and they're commonly used. In addition to these tools, you have got the normal fill features, line features and effects. If I go into some of these, you've got shadows. If I put some shadows on, so there's a shadow coming out the bottom. And then if you go into um, shadow again, you've got shadow options at the bottom. Not for all of them, but there are some options that you can select. For example, if I pick red, so the colour's gone red. And then you've got the transparency option. You can bring it, make it a bit more prominent or less prominent and you can play around with all of these features it's going to come out of that for now you've got all these tools at the top sent bring to front or center back send backwards center back so basically this means if i send it to an, an object to the back it will go to the very back if i send it to backwards it will just go back one shape so i'm going to try and do that need to colour these slightly different so you can see the difference. Let's just colour that one a different colour. So if I get myself another shape, so that's blue, and if I bring a circle in, and I'll change that colour to red. So I've got three shapes, and just move this, move that one so it's off the edges as well. So that's off the edge. So at the moment, that is sitting on top of that, so if I go send to back, I won't, I'll go backwards one. It's not gone right to the back, it's, but it's gone behind this. If I click it again, it's gone behind the pink one. So that's why these two look very similar, but one is going straight to the back, other one's going, other one's going back step by step. So if I send this straight to the back, send to back, that's gone straight to the back of these three. If I click on this one and send backwards one, Oops, two, then it's gone to the back. So that's what they're all about. What you've got over here is if you decide that you don't want that shape, you've got the option to change that shape for over here to whichever one you want. Or you can just pull it off and then bring another one back on. Now what this next section is about, this little bit at the end, layers, this is quite a cool little feature. You can actually layer diagrams. So if I click on this um, diagram, let me just send that to the back. And then if I go to layers, you've got layer, assign to layer, layer properties. So if I click on that first, I'll go new, I'll just call it Steve. Okay. So that's okay to that. And then if I go to layer properties, I can lock Steve, so lock Steve, so that, that's not going to move. Okay, so now I can't click on this. I can click on these other shapes, but I can't actually click on this cock shape because I've now laid it and locked it, so it's set, it's set in position. So this is useful when you're doing uh, using a, a, a template that's a floor plan maybe, or an office plan, where you need walls to be set in stone. You set them up. You put plug sockets in and windows and doors in. You spend a lot of time getting it all nicely laid out and then you accidentally knock or pull the walls and everything's loose again and sitting in the middle of nowhere. It's really annoying. So using layers to stop that happening and then you can go back into layer properties at any time. Take the tick off lock. Okay. And then you can move it again. 
So this is just a very quick video on some of the basic features in Microsoft Visio, just to get you started doing a little diagram. So hopefully this video was of use. Thank you for your time for this one though, and I'll catch you on the next one.